I think the people that wanted to be here are here at this point. You guys agree? Well, I feel like I have a room of rock stars because you stay for the last session. <laughs> and just by default, that makes you, you know, a rock star in my book. So I don't know why my talk starts with good morning, but, <laughs> but it's obviously end of the day. I can't believe we made it. So thank you for being here. I'm excited to talk a little bit about some um, tips and they're all gonna be tied into budget and what does it mean to actually have a value event AV production. Now, let me start with a question that I'm sure many of you have wrestled with. How can we create unforgettable events where excellence meets efficiency without our budgets blowing through the roof? I don't know if I'm the only one that asked that question, but I'm sure some of you have actually struggled with it when you receive the AV bill and you're like, what is happening right now? Because I cannot serve food anymore because this is taking all my budget. Obviously, this is a universal puzzle that we're all trying to solve. So my goal today is to try and do that. But before I do that, let me take you back in time for a moment. And yes, that is me there many, many moons ago. And I want to entertain you with a short story of my early days in AV production. Analog was the word. Analog mixers, speakers, video switchers, lights, projectors, spark cans, anything that you can think. There's no LED inside. Wireless mics were still operating on the prohibited 700 megahertz spectrum. And there was no such tools like, you know, wireless sure workbench where you can analyze frequencies to make sure that mics don't interfere and you don't get the radio station coming through the PA system and whatnot. So picture me, I just started working for a production company down in LA. I was fresh out of school and I was tasked with, the, with this important job of delivering sound for a wedding and I was armed with literally nothing but my raw enthusiasm and some very basic AV gear. Little did I know that the RF was gonna be my biggest enemy that day. Now, the ceremony was set against this beautiful backdrop. And as you can imagine, all the details were right and everything was just beautiful. Unfortunately, the, the, the wedding started being plagued by this unpredictable, unpredictable nature of the RF just interfering, crackles, pops everywhere. It was a harsh lesson into the capricious nature of technology and the critical importance of quality equipment. That was the day when I truly understood that in the world of AV, sometimes your biggest challenges are invisible, but the lessons learned are crystal clear. And from those trials and tribulations, <laughs> I emerged not just unscattered, but enlightened really, those early battles with the RF demons have laid the foundation for what I would later become an advocate for excellent Navy, now recognized as a leading woman in, in this field, but also I got to witness firsthand the fascinating evolution of AV in event production for the last 20 years. So allow me to introduce myself. My name is Anka Patton Trifan, and my uh, company is Trifan Events. It uh, is a woman-owned event AV production agency and technology agency that is known for its innovative uh, approach. I'm also the host of Events Demystify podcast that is currently run running the evolution of AI in event season, a series of conversations with top event professionals and thought leaders in our industry on the impact of AI uh, for our events. And over the years, I've been fortunate enough to get this, this accolade and that award and whatnot, but what truly fills my heart with pride is also founding two different communities, which are dear to my heart, Fit Mindful Mavens, which actually implements wellness strategies for event professionals and women behind the scenes in events and technology. And out of those 20 years of event production that were you know, enhanced by my most recent bodybuilding fitness journey, 
Fun fact, I am also a competing bodybuilder and my next show is coming up in a month. There came the need for a new blueprint for events, one that is built upon the four core values, the way um, I look at it. Engagement, experience, empathy, and evolution. This is what we like to call at Refine Events, the fit for events framework. A framework that advocates a holistic approach to event management, blending AV production, innovative AI technology, audience engagement, and team empowerment, all with an underlying emphasis on mental and physical wellness, on smart agendas, on healthy meal choices. Anybody got sick after last night? Because we are on a mission to redefine the event experience in order to create the most innovative events. And today, as we explore the first pillar of high value AV production, I invite you to join me in reimagining how we can approach event production, not just as a tool, but as a canvas for creating those experiences, all the while keeping our budget firmly grounded. But before I do that, I actually wanna hear from you. There's a QR code on the screen that I invite you to snap a picture of. If you're at the end, back of the room, you might have a hard time with that because I tried it. So I hope you can. If not, I'm gonna ask you to shout some uh, words out there. The, the QR code will take you to a Mentimeter poll. It's actually a word cloud. And it will ask you to input three different words to describe what you think when you think high value AV event production. And while I do that, the QR code is still on the screen in case you didn't catch that. Let me share with you what we're gonna talk about today. During our time together, we will navigate through elements of high value event production, and those will be core elements. We'll dive into practical budgeting production tips, and I will offer some insights to maximize impact while minimizing cost. And then looking forward, if we still have time for it, <laughs> hopefully, I will go through a, a section which is really a, let's imagine what the future could be, which has an emphasis on the in integration of AI in AV, highlighting how technology is not just changing the game, and my screen just went black, and that was not intentional, <laughs> but elevating it. And then we'll wrap up with some questions and resources at the end. All right, so let's see what we got from all those votes that we hopefully got to. Okay. I think even the projector is tired after so many hours. Okay, all right. So let's look at this. I love it. Different, memorable, impactful, excellent value, engaging, expensive, <laughs> partnership, quality, professional, appeals to all, five senses, worth it, trustworthy, beautiful, inclusive. I love it. I think all of those are very valid definitions and I thank you for taking the time to do that. And let me see if I can go back to my previous screen now. All right, and that's a snapshot of a previous look of what that was. And it sounds like we're just gonna have to go through this peekaboo of where you see the screen or you don't see the slides. So we'll see what happens. All right, so you've probably seen this fun image that was shared across the event professional community. Who, whomever came up with, with it, I think they were onto something. And I know we're trying to troubleshoot that. I see, I see the sweat coming off, Jason. <laughs> now imagine, the coveted Stanley mug as your dream AV event production, big, bold, and beautiful. And then the big goal, big goal well, that's the budget, a bit rugged, down to earth, but it's also critical. We've got to know what the budget is. So how do we make the expectations meet the budget without losing the cool factor? The foundation upon which I see high value AV production to be built upon is made of seven critical elements that contribute to an event success. 
And those elements, I put them to match the acronym PARTNER because those are defining some essential qualities, all of which are instrumental in creating that perfect harmony between technical prowess and client satisfaction, making every event memorable and engaging and worth it and within budget. It's not just about having an AV company who can set up a bunch of mics and screens, but rather a partner that is an extension to your team that works closely with you, that is teaching you the basics and is guiding you on what would be the most beneficial thing to do for your event at an affordable price, whatever that might be. So what are those partner principles? Professionalism, expertise in delivering top-notch service. Affordability, offering value without compromising quality. Reliability, dependable execution and support. Trustworthiness, building confidence through transparency and integrity. Nimbleness, flexibility to adapt and to innovate. And excellence, a commitment to surpassing expectations. And the last one, rapport, which is establishing a collaborative relationship. Now, high value AV production transcends more than be the technical setup, the, all the things that create that AV setup. It's about forging a partnership that embodies all of those essential elements. A partnership that brings peace of mind, trust, and flawless executions, which were some of the words that were used actually in the poll earlier, while delivering maximum value, both in terms of the experience that it provides and also the impact that it has, aligning your event with the vision and the budget. Now that we know what those critical elements are, which form the foundation upon which an event success lies in regards to AV, let's talk budget. And I love how we're talking about AV and the screen just keeps going black. <laughs> I'm just gonna crack myself up. So every time that happens, I'm gonna have to come up with a joke or something. <laughs> well, obviously the allure of the latest AV technology, AI technology, AV production, and the most amazing venue is strong. Yet, it's the budget that ultimately grounds our decisions. And smart budgeting is a critical aspect of high value AV event production. The concept of fast, good, cheap, pick two, underscores the need for strategic financial planning, in many cases, way before you're ready to ask for that initial AV quote. So, Next, I'm gonna explore some core planning considerations and we'll touch on each one of those that are listed on the screen and provide tips for each to help you make better informed budgeting decisions. That's the point of this talk. So we'll start with, it's funny because I was here for another session and Heidi was leading that. And what do you think we start with when we talk EV? Event objectives. What is your event? Why are you putting on an event? What is it supposed to uh, accomplish? What is, why is the reason why your event is happening in the first place? Before you dive into any of the nitty gritty technical event planning and receiving all of AV RFPs, it's crucial to define those objectives because what that RFP will be and what that's gonna translate is based on that. It's not just about putting on a show, like I said, it's about making every single do dollar count. So understanding how AV can enhance the event experience is crucial for designing the high value event. And in order to do that, you do have to have some kind of a understanding of who your audience is and what is it that they're looking for. Uh, you wanna know their preferences, you wanna know their expectations, and you wanna know their limitations to ensure that you have an experience that it is aligned with the event's course objectives. When it comes to the strategic planning of your event, event duration and location hold the keys to unlocking a budget that works for you rather than against you. For example, the, 
decision to extend an event from say a 2.5 days to a three days might seem like not a big deal and is all is often made with the best intentions and that has actually happened to us for a conference recently because maybe you're thinking oh i'm aiming to provide more value and content and why not why shouldn't we do it however this very minor change has the potential to inflate your budget from 20 to 25 percent more because and i'm only talking av costs here okay because what initially seems to be that just minor tick tweak to the, to the schedule can actually result in a huge increase in additional equipment, in staffing expenses, in overtime charges. And if this extension happens over the weekend, then we're looking even at, you know, overtime, doubling the overtime. So that's even more than what you initially thought that you're going to pay. So the same way with the duration the selection of the venue has a lot to do with how are you going to manage, manage the budget. A venue that is conveniently located, so say like, you know, um, the Austin Convention Center, not too far from the airport, in a metro area, that is way more easier to maintain the budget for because you're avoiding expensive transportation costs. Taking a truck from A to B, from a location here to some other location there, a remote destination, that's going to be a lot of cost that is, you're going to incur. And we're not even talking about how hard it might be to actually find skilled labor, which is, again, having access to a higher labor pool, having access to scenic design, having access to resources, to equipment that is making things easier and that all has to do it at the end of the day with the budget, with the bottom line. How much is this going to cost us? Plus, you know, your attendees probably will have a hard time to get to your event if it's somewhere in the middle of nowhere. And while the charm and the allure of a unique venue, I get that, is there. The scenic venue that everybody wants to have that nobody had an event at before, it's appealing. And make sure that, let's stop. And it's, it's important, especially if you're trying to go after that unique experience, but it has to be weighted against your budget if budget is your prime concern. These beautiful settings often come with hidden costs that can quickly turn um, your budget dreams into a nightmare, plus some logistical nightmares that you might not <laughs> want to deal with. We had an event uh, in, uh, back in Idaho. Uh, yes, I'm from Boise. And the client wanted to take, um, to, to have this beautiful uh, event in the Salted Mountains. Uh, talk to me afterwards if you want more details about how difficult that was to get trucks with equipment on some crazy roads and get people out there and how much more expensive that event was. But again, it was done. Budget was not a concern at that point anymore. Now, choosing the right venue for your event also involves navigating other type of considerations. Like for example, when it comes to a distinction, you need to know what is the distinction between a venue that is a union venue versus a non-union venue, which can have a profound impact on your budget. Union venues, for example, often require the hiring of union labor for various event related tasks from rigging to lighting to sound and general assistance. And this labor cost can quickly accumulate in accumulate leading to some additional increases into the overall event budget. One unfortunate example here was that of a experience one of our clients had with a union venue where over the course of three days, they were obligated to pay an astounding $18,000 in union labor charges. Now, this fee was not for specialized labor or expertise. He was for union babysitters, basically individuals that were assigned to oversee the AV crew setup. They were not there to do anything but just be present for some reason. And there was no way to go around it after signing the contract. And obviously the client found that to be a very upsetting and frustrating <laughs> because it was an addition to the budget that they didn't account for. Try to save yourself from that headache. Which goes to say that the process of selecting the perfect venue for your event 
is not just about aesthetics and location. It's a comprehensive evaluation that if done properly, can protect your budget from unexpected financial burdens. So when you go to a venue sourcing and you're trying to vet a venue you, and you're looking at different, you know, food and, uh, food and beverage costs and why not, it also requires that you go into a deep dive. Some of the additional costs that could easily accumulate fast and overshadow that base venue cost. So when you're sourcing venues, my best advice is insist on receiving separate itemized quotes from all potential venues, especially detailing power, rigging, Wi-Fi, union-related charges, loading, uh, loading load out, dock charges, and availability. One, ex one example here is where one venue, like this one, they could charge you for power by the amount of amps you require, while another venue, which I've uh, experienced, was charging by the outlets. Anytime, anytime there's something plugged into an outlet, there, go, there went $100. That's a lot of outlets to account for. So understanding the fine print on those charges is crucial. Rigging equipment, for example, not only requires specialized expertise to ensure that there's safety met and compliance with the venue regulations, but also costs significantly more introducing an additional layer of complexity and expense. Similarly, loading loadout charges and availability of that loading dock can affect your setup and breakdown schedule because if there's a loading dock that you didn't for some reason schedule to, to have a certain time or it's something is it's, it's running over time, that will put your entire production crew over time as well. And that's gonna just take into, it's gonna translate into escalating labor charges. In addition to this cost, and by the way, this was one event that we did in Atlanta and just the overtime charges that were paid because the rigging crew were not, were not able to come into the venue at the time that was scheduled. And that put the entire production behind by many, many hours. That was a bill of about $60,000 just in overtime charges that were not estimated and were not, there was more discussions to be had after that, who was responsible or not for that. But what I'm trying to say here is you have to know those charges in advance. You can't just sign a contract if you do not know how much that's gonna cost you. In addition to that, the, the choice between different ballroom sizes and configurations can also have some budget implications. Like for example, opting for a larger ballroom, even though sometimes that might be considered not as intimate, it provides the opportunity to maybe be strategic about what are the things that you're going to rig versus the things that you could ground support. And by selecting a venue that has more space or has a bottom large enough where you could do a lot of ground supported setups, you can actually size up some of the rigging fees, allocating those funds maybe towards something else, enhancing parts of the event that suits you better. Unless you want to rig everything and you want everything to be in the air, which is, again, probably not a budget concern at, at that point anymore. So the best pro tip I have here is a crit critical aspect of venue vetting process is to anticipate this cost before signing that venue contract. This for foresight will allow for more accurate budgeting and can prevent the sticker shock that I find too many times is actually attributed to AV when in reality is venue related cost you need to know about. So by carefully vetting venues and truthfully understanding the associated costs, we can make informed decisions that can align better with the event uh, vision and the budget. High production value at its most basic elemental level ultimately hinges on those things. How clear is your sound? How bright are the projectors? How vibrant are the lights if you have lights? And how cool is that stage design if you have that? 
If budget is of concern, keeping this in mind ensures that the event can still deliver an experience without compromising on the most basic quality while eliminating unforeseen financial strain. Okay, I'm out of breath. And we've got to take a damn break, all right? So, because you've been sitting in those chairs for like how long? <laughs> Too long. So here's what we're gonna do. I know for myself that when I go to conferences and the agenda is awfully packed and I don't even have time for a bio break, I, let alone like sink, take all this information, let it sink in, I just, I, I, don't, I don't operate the same. So we're gonna all get up. Yes, we will. We're gonna stretch a little bit. If you didn't hear about me, I am a movement disruptor. And what we're gonna do today to disrupt some of this is by introducing some movement into this Uber field agenda with a million of slides. And we're gonna do a movement which I call the ban and I have instructions. So you're like, oh, this is what we're doing. But before we do that, actually, I just want you to like find a, a place where you feel like you're comfortable and just start rolling your shoulders, whatever, feel that st stretch and the stress and all the things that you've been packing on your, in your body, just relax a little bit. You can do the same with your neck, roll your neck. If I was sitting in, ch in a chair for too long, I would do this movement. Now, you try not to like smack somebody when you do this, but I would just pretend like I'm sitting, but I'm actually just stretching a little bit my limbs and my thighs, especially my thighs, to get the blood flowing. Whew. Okay, all right. And now we're gonna do the bend. Why do I call it the bend? Actually, this movement was invented by Ben Hinderman. He is the ex-CEO of Splash. And he used to do this during COVID, during all those million of Zoom meetings that we all had, just to get people a bit like, you know, shaken up. So don't, don't worry about me embarrassing myself. I'm used to it. So what we're gonna do, find a little bit of a space so you don't knock anybody left and right. And we're gonna start with shaking our right hand for a count of five. We're gonna go to the left, then right leg, left leg, and we're gonna count down from there up all the way to basically one. All right, so we're ready? We're gonna do this together. And here we go. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Balance, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, 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 one. Woo! How are we feeling? Are we feeling somewhat refreshed? If you're not, I've got more moves. <laughs> All right, let's move on. Time is of essence. Okay, agenda. A well-planned run of show is another crucial element in controlling the AV budget for an event. The complexity of the schedule, including time-sensitive room changes and flips and AV changes, will always increase cost. This kind of changes will either require additional staff or maybe having that current staff working overtime. So time sensitive changes are the type of changes that impact budget more than anything. So having a clear understanding and a timing that is crucial for this is, is, is akin to like choosing the best moment to invest in stocks. Choosing weekdays, and when I get my slides up, there we go. So this is actually, this is an agenda, a schedule, a crew schedule, a real crew schedule. So if you look at those times, that's, that's a long time to have 300 crew members on, on the clock. So choosing weekdays for events, say you want to do a, a three-day event, and instead of like starting on a Sunday with a setup, why not do the event to actually start the setup on a Monday, have your event Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then you load out on a Friday. Way too many events happen over the weekend, and as those weekend 
have some premium costs because you have to remember the AV team's clock runs longer than the event itself because it has to include setup, breakdowns, technical rehearsals. So what might seem like a 10 hour event day could result in a 18 hour, 20 hour work day for your AV staff, especially when there is complex AV production involved. So that obviously will lead to significant overtime charges, turning minor expenses into major budget concerns. And this wild card requires communication with your AV partner and careful planning of event timing, staff scheduling to manage the impact of long time overtime charges on the event budget. Thoughtful agenda planning and management also has an impact on your attendees. And it goes beyond the just financial benefit. When we ensure that there's sufficient breaks and smooth transitions in between sessions, like I loved what they did with the sessions here because there's about 30 minutes in between each session would give you actually enough time to take a break, like to go and take a meeting if you want to, or just go outside and get some vitamin C or something. It, it really improves your well-being. It, it makes you feel more engaged and want to be part of those sessions. Additionally, it eases the event team's anxiety, allowing them to work with confidence, knowing that every aspect of the event has been carefully considered. And this approach prevents scenarios where I've been on events where I was going on for 12 hours and had no time to, to even like grab a bite. Like we can do better than that. That's just not humane. And we have to look at that and, and, and go beyond what we think everybody likes because we like. That's not always gonna be a sustainable way of doing, doing events. In addition to managing the event schedule, another thing that we started doing, uh, especially if this is say a, a annual meeting or a, a conference, it has been actually beneficial in saving our clients quite a bit of time. And that is to do an internal run through a technical rehearsal at the headquarter of that company. So we brought all the C-level executives and we, we schedule a full day of rehearsals at their own company's headquarters, which also provided an opportunity for them to feel more relaxed and not feel like they're going against the clock and there's no time to have, you know, an opportunity to redo things or no time for mistakes. And that really took all of that pressure off of them, but also is saved in the, in the sense that we didn't have to have an entire crew on the clock. We were able to do that with less AV tax while still running through all the technical elements of the event, making sure that everything was resolved and everything was running. And the whole setup was there to, you know, to make that rehearsal happen. So that strategy really reduced the need for a large number of AV tax on the event itself in the sense that that is time at a premium and any delay can lead to stress and costly overrun. Forging a technical rehearsal, it is not recommended and not advisable in any case because it really ensures that, especially if you have a lot of uh, event production involved in the event, it really ensures that every aspect of the AV setup functions flawlessly. And yes, I know it does demand coordination. It does demand some resources and some planning and making that speaker come for the technical rehearsal when they're gonna say, I've done this a million times. We've all heard this before. But consider the technical rehearsal as an essential investment into the success of your event. It's almost like car insurance. You don't need it until you really need it. Like my screen going blank every so often. Now, choosing the right visual elements for an event is another crucial way where you can be looking at budget and what kind of a implication it might have. And it involves not just selecting the right screen types and sizes, but also considering the overall visual strategy. Like, is this going to be an event where it's going to have image magnification or video streaming or recording of the event? And this is something that Heidi talked about a little earlier when she talked about how to be your AV partner's best friend. I think I butchered the title, but <laughs> get, the, get the point. Each option has some kind of financial implication. 
So for example, using two larger screens instead of maybe smaller ones can be a cost-saving strategy while still offering a cohesive visual experience. The difference there is multiple smaller screens will increase the expense only because it requires additional projectors, converters, cables, and setup time. Selecting screen technology like LED screens can highly impact the budget in the sense that an LED screen will always cost more, especially the upfront co cost, but it does have some benefits, right? It has vibrant displays, it has flexibility in design, it also has flexibility in the way you want to have your content displays. It has a lot of benefits, but if you're on a budget, probably that's not where you want to go first. Because ultimately, the, the decision that you're making has to tie back to the event's objectives, aiming to maximize value for each dollar spent to fulfill that event's purpose. So it's crucial to assess some of those options and the added value of each one of those visual elements against its cost, ensuring that event is both impactful but financially sustainable the same. Choosing between an in-person hybrid online event format is, is yet another budget implication. Opting for a hybrid event requires a multi-camera setup, either PTZ cameras or man-operated cameras, which calls for additional labor, additional camera operators. It calls for a director to switch in between all of those live shots. It also calls for streaming technology and technicians that will you know, operate the digital platform to have the audience, online audience, also have a good experience. And it does require a different kind of production approach in the sense that that hybrid event, the online experience will focus more on a broadcasting versus a live event experience, which again, impacts the budget just because it will require a different type of skill set. A simpler streaming setup can still be effective without extensive production costs, focusing on recording the event for our archival purposes or maybe for content repurpose. A lot of uh, our clients will do recording just for the uh, content repurpose or marketing purposes. And you could even use, you know, PTZ network cameras along with maybe just one static camera at the end of the ballroom um, that could be manned and um, include the whole uh, and record the, the whole event. This approach actually I've been... Um, able to implement from my home studio where I have streamed remotely a lot of events where I would get feeds from the in-person um, and I would stream them to the platform and then just produce the virtual part of the event itself. And that can still be done at a high value production without breaking the bank. Now, let's also address the in-house versus outsource AV debacle. When does it make sense? It's important to note that most in-house AV teams typically have a more general, well-rounded experience in AV rather than specialized expertise in event productions and maybe the latest AV tools. And while in-house AV teams may have good intentions and might be a good option for some events, they might lack the high-end event production expertise and experience that could potentially result in challenges and learning curves that could impact your overall success of your event. So it all matters, again, going back to the objective. What is the objective of the event? What are we trying to accomplish here? And what type of event is this? That is just a small behind the scenes AV, we call it the video world, but there's a lot of things happening there. And that type of skill level, labor is not gonna be your in-house labor in most cases. It's also very common for the AV build, probably this you've experienced many times before, where the in-house would include a service charge that can range anywhere between 25 to 40% unless you possess some magical negotiation skills. However, it's worth exploring the potential benefits that an in-house team can offer as long as you can either maybe negotiate some of those service charges or maybe bundle up services related to broadband power, discounts or multi-room AV setups, all the things that we mentioned earlier. Now, I have to say something here, a side note, I might be biased, but I have to say choosing maybe a smaller woman-owned or POC-owned AV agency that offers some unique advantages 
in the sense that these agencies prioritize excellent service because they cannot afford not to. Our pipeline is not humongous. We cannot afford to have a bad experience, a bad event. So we're gonna give you our best while also setting industry standards for inclusivity and representation, providing more than just technical solutions. A prime example of this commitment is a recent event, a Zoomtopia event, where there were intentional efforts made to staff large breakout sessions with lead female AV techs, highlighting a commitment to diversity and enhancing the event by introducing a varied perspective and skill set. This approach, which I am strongly big advocate of, the reason why I have founded a community called Women Behind the Scenes in Event Productions, offers clients a top-notch technical and logistical support, but also promotes diversity. And it makes you feel good about the fact that you are part of contributing to an inclusive environment and boosting the event's impact and aligning with a wider inclusivity and representation goals. One main takeaway here is that high value AV event production hinges not just on the technical prowess, but on the dedicated team behind it. The core of a remarkable event lies in, in, an, in having an engaging team that really cares about the, your event, that excels in their roles, and is generally investing invested in, in your event success, guaranteeing that you will have an amazing experience, you yourself as the planner, but also your attendees, and also a smooth process for the planning team. Partnering with a skilled and trustworthy production company is, is essential in ensuring that you have the high quality event outcome. The ideal AV partner, as we, you know, uh, we heard earlier, will seemingly integrate with your team and will ensure that a well-executed event will align with your budgetary constraints, allowing for creative budget allocation and ensuring that AV enhancements are supported by your event's objectives despite of your maybe financial limitations. So to wrap it all up, by carefully considering the financial aspects of venue contracts, labor costs, scheduling, and expected expenses that can be avoided, uh, union versus non-union, all of those have to do with cost-effective uh, strategies that can help your event. Achieving a balance between high value production and budget constraints involves understanding the trade-offs that each one of those decisions entails. And the best way to know what are those trade-offs is to find a production partner that is adept in the nuances of production in a way that can not only understand it, but they can translate it to you so you know it too. And they, that is the partner that you want to involve from the very beginning in that process. Now, my last part, and I think I have just a few minutes to run through this because I'm really, I'm really excited about what the future might bring when it comes to AV and AI integration. And from my early beginnings, humble beginnings, you know, fighting RF demons that plagued that era, <laughs> I would love for you to dream with me for a moment of what the future might bring, a future that is characterized by harnessing technology and innovation and not that video. I actually just did a funny reel on TikTok about how we're event professionals and we're trying to, like we're helping you to avoid the loading screen. <laughs> it just happened to me. <laughs> oh, the irony of it all. But anyway, I personally believe that AI technology is going to propel us to the next level. And team had uh, quite a few good tips on how you can take uh, your AI knowledge from, you know, chat GPT to, there's a lot of other tools out there. AI enhanced AV technology such as 3D projections can turn simple walls into some dynamic storytelling platforms. I don't know how many of you have been at the sphere and experienced the sound at the sphere. 
What they actually installed in there is some next level advanced sound engineering. Uh, those speakers are called Holoplux XY mat matrix array. And as you, as you listen to this experience, it's like you have your own personal sound bubble that can even like provide translation to you in your own language, which is extraordinary. It's having that attendee feel like they're part of the experience, that they're targeted, and it really, it really enhances the immersive aspect of it. This type of personalization and immersion is really the future. We have AI-driven production drones and light shows that can react to music and audience emotions and can create some visually stunning and emotionally resonant experiences. Apple's Vision Pro that just came out, it, it captured our hearts and our minds and our eyes of what is possible. The same way Apple understands its users, so our events should understand our attendees. AV has the potential to breathe life into realistic VR environments beyond the traditional meetings and events with interactive VR sessions, holographic presentations, or live de demos that leave your attendees in awe. Coupled with the use of AI tools for personalization agenda, by the way, Spark, anyone heard that during team session? Use it if you don't know how to personalize your agenda because it's a great AI tool. AI, AR for immersive product demos, real-time analytics to enhance each a participant's engagement levels, customize their experience based on their preferences, based on their interactions, real-time interactions with attendees being able to choose unique adventure paths based on what they want to experience. Customized content tracks, tailored networking opportunities, personalized communication, pre and post event can transform the attendee experience. And Jen here, my friend, she was actually she was uh, explaining to me earlier how she has been able to do that for her events and create very custom pitches for her clients and for her attendees. And everybody was like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. And we're thinking this is actually like, one one, <laughs> like you were barely scratching the surface here. There is um, AI algorithms that can predict attendee preferences and dynamically alter event schedules and customize content delivery based on different learning styles enriching the event experience further. And my favorite is this concept of wellness integration, which represents a visionary future where AV, AI, and neuroscience converge to enhance events for both mental and physical well-being. And that's basically what the Fit for Events framework is all about. It's an innovative intersection that aims to deepen our experience in the sense that there's going to be engagement for attendees' well-being. I know there was like a wellness room. Anybody else been in there? Okay, room 15, check it out. I love when event organizers are thinking about this, but imagine utilizing AI to translate biometric data such as heart rate or stress levels, which allows for real-time adjustment of the environment to maximize comfort and engagement. And this could involve like simple things like modifying lighting or maybe playing music for a session during like an intense discussion or maybe adjusting music tempo for re-energizing re the audience because they're like falling asleep. All of this is offering a holistic approach to the event experience to a level that I am excited for what the next 10 years will bring. I don't know about you, but I'm like, I am so in for it. Neuroscience confirms that the significant, there's a significant impact that the environment that we are in impacts our mental state. And technology can translate and respond to emotions in ways in which we are responding and connecting with events. And this evolution, which is emotional technology, promises a future where events not only engage, but also deeply resonate with our uh, emotional and well being levels. Advancement in AV and AI are ushering in a new era of event production where we can craft unique experiences that promote that holistic well-being and emotional resonance, making a shift towards 
events that prioritize personalization and the overall health of participants. And there's been a study that just came out. I, I saved it. I'm going to have to put in the resources because I, I was fascinated to see how much as a community of event professionals, of people, we care about our emotional well-being, we care about our experiences, and we care about how events make us feel at the end of the day. Like we think we're just like rational beings, but no, we're actually, we're rational beings that have emotions and that's how we make our decisions more often than not. In 2024, I personally believe that it pays to deliver memorable experiences so don't be afraid to think about, to think outside of the box. Glean inspirations from other winning products like the Apple Vision Pro. Go all in and understand how this technology works and it can help support your events and it can help serve your attendees, better, uh, have better experiences, better events and help you serve them better. In closing, I, since my screen went dark, I encourage each one of you to embrace this. It's an exciting new world that we're living in, to imagine new possibilities, to unleash the potential and redefine the event experience. And now as a parting thought, in a world where technology can read and respond to our emotions, how will we redefine the art of connection and engagement at events? And with that, thank you for allowing me to speak for many minutes. <laughs> if you want to connect with me on LinkedIn, that is my QR code. And then I have a QR code for the slides, if you want to get those slides. And if there's any questions, this would be the time. So slides here and the previous one is um, connect with me on LinkedIn and see what's, where we're going with the, the Feed for Events framework. I do a lot of content around that and I hope you glean some inspiration from it. Okay, questions, questions, everybody. It's like, we're out. It's dinner time. Thank you, everyone.